Hi, my name is Tyler Roberts. I'm a cybersecurity analyst for Raider. Prior to this, I spent five years in the Marine Corps working as an intelligence analyst for the NSA. From experience, I can tell you that bad actors, spammers, hackers, etc., never let an emergency go to waste. They take advantage of the disruption to our lives, deploy attacks in an attempt to collect our data or install malware or ransomware on our devices. So today I want to talk about some of the scams that are being used specifically related to COVID-19. And I'll also talk about a few tips about how to more securely work at home. So let's go ahead and get started. Like I said, the scammers never let an emergency go to waste, and this may be the biggest emergency that any of us have faced in our lifetimes. Uh, this COVID-19 pandemic provides an opportunity for scammers to take advantage of fear, sense of urgency, or desire for information um, that a lot of people are experiencing. And it doesn't help that many of us are now working in a less secure environment than we would be in an office setting. So more than ever, it's important to maintain a security mindset and use extra caution um, and be extra wary of anything specifically involving personal information, uh, credentials for accounts, or any sort of financial transaction you may come across in these times. The most common vector of attack uh, would be email. And so we can take a look at a few examples of some of the scam emails that are out there and talk about the common red flags you can be watching out for. So this first one might be a little bit more easy to recognize as spam mail, but you see here that the scammers are using an association with the CDC by putting their logo on here um, to give themselves a false sense of legitimacy. They're also taking advantage of the material shortage, in this case, hand sanitizer. You know, you can't find any in stores, you get this email saying, hey, you can buy some on this website, even more so at a discount. And so you click on the link and it may ask you to log in or it may ask you to provide credit card information. And those scammers can steal that information using scams like these. Another common technique is to spoof um, the identity or uh, the organization internal to your company. Um, in this case, we see um, an email that's allegedly from an HR department saying, hey, we've introduced some office policies. Go ahead and click on the attachment and review what those policies are, uh, some changes that we've made in response to COVID-19. You think that's important information, you to click on the, on the attachment there. You see it's not a text file or a Word file, it's actually an HTML link. And it takes you to a site that says, hey, go ahead and log in to view the information. So you end up putting in your email credentials and the scammers end up stealing that information from you. Um, outside of HR departments, one of the very common emails that we see are, are emails spoofing company executives. If you happen to get an email that says, hey, this is CEO of the company, or this, this appears to be from CEO of the company saying, hey, this is an urgent matter, send me your cell phone number so I can give you a call. Um, that's something that we've seen very commonly, uh, but what that is is spammers just attempting to get your cell phone information so they can sell that data or send you even more spam attacks um, via text message. And we'll look at one of those in just a bit. So this one um, I thought was a really great example um, because it's actually um, pretty well hidden as a fraudulent email. Um, there are some common red flags that we tell users to look out for. Um, those include suspicious um, email addresses used by the sender, um, suspicious looking attachments, especially uh, executable files or .zip files, uh, grammatical and spelling errors, um, those used to be very common in spam emails, and uh, they've become a little less common now. And then finally, to uh, examine any links you have to click on. So you'll notice those first three red flags don't exist in this email. You have a very normal looking sender email address. There's no attachment. The email is well written, uh, but there is a link here to examine. So if you hover over that, what you'll initially see is that it is uh, appearing to go to a legitimate website, dcis.hhs.gov. Uh, well, that's the Department of Health and, and Human Services, and .gov addresses, uh, those can often be trusted. However, there is a vulnerability that exists here that allows them to redirect you to a second address. You'll see they're highlighted in red, um, that IP address, it's going to send you there instead, and it might look like the Human Health Services uh, website, um, but it's actually this uh, malicious actor who's created a fake website they can then use uh, to have you fill out a form, provide personal information, and then steal that information from you. Um, so this one's a little trickier and uh, something that you should be aware of that you gotta be looking out for. So I mentioned earlier how they can use your cell phone number to send you text messages. that are also, also fraudulent or malicious. Um, in this case, again, taking advantage of material shortage. Hey, there's not a lot of masks to be had. Red Cross has some, we're gonna give some out for free. Okay, that sounds great. So you click on this link. Well, notice here, that this isn't actually the Red Cross website at all. 
It's redcross-facemask.ca. Something that's really easy to scrutinize is uh, that last bit there, that .ca, anything that's not .com, uh, .org, .gov, you should immediately be suspicious. So let's say you do click on this link. They're going to say, hey, these are free, but you just need to pay a small delivery fee. You know, provide your credit card information, and then the, the spammers will have that as well. So just those are, those are some of the things you can be watching out for uh, when you're dealing with communication. Again, the big, the big things to highlight, anything asking for personal data, credentials, or financial transaction, that's when you need to be especially cautious. So we talked about how they're trying to install uh, malware or ransomware on machines. For those that don't know, ransomware is an executable file that gets downloaded. Uh, when run, it encrypts all your data and then leaves a ransom note, asking for some form of payment in order to get your data decrypted. Uh, something that we've seen a lot is that um, a victim might be uh, might run the ransomware on their computer, pay the ransom, get everything decrypted, but they're not making any changes to the security of their environment, and they hit with the same attack 30 days later. So if you are uh, unfortunate enough to be hit with ransomware, I would advise reaching out to some sort of expert that can help you and reach out to us. and uh, and we can help walk you through uh, the correct way to respond. So let's walk through a video here that kind of shows just uh, what a ransomware attack might look like. It's actually quite simple. Um, starting out here, this just shows a public service announcement from the FBI warning about COVID-19 uh, scams and phishing emails like we've been talking about. There's also an article here that uh, reviews NetWalker, the COVID-19 specific ransomware that's being deployed. Uh, that's from bleepingcomputer.com, a very good website for keeping up with cybersecurity issues. Here it identifies the attachment that's being downloaded, coronavirus underscore COVID-19.bps. That's a, that's a script that's going to be running. And when it does, um, it, it installs and runs an executable file on your device. So there is that um, script that gets downloaded from an email. And when you click on it, it's going to run the payload and put that uh, encryption executable into the temp folder of your Windows device. And as and when that gets run, you see all these documents are becoming encrypted. And what's left behind is this uh, ransom note. And this is a real life example of what a ransom note might look like. And it, it actually reads, you know, uh, pretty benign. Hey, your files are encrypted, uh, you know, Sorry, this is just business, and for them, it really is. Um, these these are no longer, you know, individuals acting on their own, you know, working from their basement. That's an old stereotype. Now these are highly organized and highly sophisticated events, and it gives you some pretty straightforward instructions on how to pay a ransom and decrypt your data. Um, like I mentioned before, uh, this this can be a very tricky situation to deal with. So if you do happen to suffer a ransomware attack, uh, please reach out to someone. Um, who has the expertise to properly help you. Uh, finally, before I go into the tips about securely working from home, um, this is a really good resource. Uh, CISA is one of uh, our many intelligence agencies. This one's the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, and they provide some precautions um, for defending against COVID-19 cyber scams. And these actually uh, just review a lot of the same things we talked about today. Avoid clicking on links and unsolicited emails. Be wary of email attachments. Um, we've covered that pretty well. Use trusted sources, such as legitimate government websites, for up-to-date information. Um, that one's uh, really important. I know it was um, going around that there were a lot of fraudulent websites um, that were out there that you know allegedly showed COVID-19 maps that people like to look at to you know, show the spread of the virus. But these fake websites were being used to deploy malware on people's devices. Um, a really good way to deal with that is to find a legitimate source and then bookmark that source. That way you know you're always going to a trusted site. Um, don't reveal personal or financial information in email. Again, I, I've said it a few times, personal data, uh, financial transactions, anytime you're using your credentials, those are the things that you wanna be extra cautious about. Verify a charity's authenticity before making donations. Um, again, goes to the financial transaction bit, and this really applies to any organization uh, to whom you're giving money um, in any regard. Verify the authenticity of that transaction uh, before it's made. And then finally, you can review the, these insights um, on the CISA uh, website, which is just CISA.gov. So let's talk about working from home. 
Uh, the first thing is you, the end user. You are the first line of defense and the best line of defense. Uh, we talked about keeping that security mindset. As long as you are wary and cautious, uh, you can prevent a lot of uh, scams from from ever you know being successfully executed. Because uh, if you can detect the the fraudulent emails uh, before they're clicked on um, or before any action is taken, uh, that can do a lot to prevent um, any sort of personal data being lost or malware being installed. Uh, second, talking about your home network. Again, we're in less secure environments than we normally would be. So there's some steps that you should take to make sure that your home network uh, has some of those layers of security. The first thing you want to do, and it's something that it's just so rarely done, but so important to do, is change the default administrator password for your network. If you don't know how to do that, Google it or call us and we'll help walk you through it. Um, if a bad actor does gain access to your machine, it's extremely easy for them to use the default administrator credentials that are easily available online to get onto your network, make the changes, and then give them an opportunity to come in later with further attacks, um, especially if you're able to shut down their initial attack and they've, they've left some vulnerabilities in your network, they can just come right back around and, and get back into your devices. Um, only allow people and devices that you trust to join your network. Um, that should really go without being said. And then make strong passwords to gain access to your network. Um, that's that's a really important one that leads us into uh, my third third point of interest, and that's passwords in general. Um, passwords are you know half of the foundation of your digital identity. You have your username and your password. And your passwords really you know the the gateway um, to to gain entry into your digital uh, accounts. So what you want to do with passwords is you want to create complex passwords that are unique to every account that you have. And I know that can be that can sound overwhelming, uh, but there's a lot of tools out there that can be used to help uh, to help achieve that. Um, Google password managers. There's a lot of great products out there um, that can help uh, create complex passwords that are unique to every account that you use online. If you do come up with your own passwords for accounts, um, then what we recommend is using passphrases. Um, these are short, easy to remember sentences that include you know, all the correct punctuation and grammar. And that way you can create something that meets the length requirements and meets the complexity requirements that make it hard to crack, but also easy for you to remember and easy to type you know, on, a, on a repetitive basis. Uh, the example I always use is I love the Beatles. Capitalized I, capitalized B, you put an exclamation point at the end. And with the spaces there, I think you have something you know, in the 13 to 15 character range, easy to type, easy to remember. Uh, and, and also very secure. The fourth thing is uh, make sure everything is up to date. The operating systems on your devices um, should always have the latest updates installed, and the software you're using uh, should always have the latest updates installed uh, that it can help uh, make sure that the, the known security vulnerabilities are patched um, you know, in, in the most up-to-date fashion. Uh, a, a, com, a, 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 you know, a recent great example of this is uh, Zoom platform used for um, you know, remote collaboration, that's become very popular recently, but obviously had a lot of security holes exposed. And while they're still working to close um, some, some of those vulnerabilities, using the latest uh, updated version of that software means that you're working in as secure environment as possible. And then finally, you have to be wary of kids and guests in your home. Now that you're sharing your home life with your work life, uh, you wanna make sure there's a separation between um, you know, the personal activities uh, online or on your devices and your work activities. Um, ideally, you're using separate activities uh, for personal matters, or excuse me, separate devices for personal matters and work devices, uh, work matters. Um, that it's it's important that a kid doesn't get the opportunity to hop on to your work computer and you know they go to play some online game at a sketchy site. Uh, they end up downloading some malware that infects the machine, and then you know you lose your work data or worse. You bring that into the office at a later date and then end up, you know, um, causing some havoc in the office environment. So that kind of wraps up what I wanted to talk about today. Um, like I said, the, the main takeaway here is just maintain a security mindset. Be wary, be cautious, especially when dealing with personal information, any sort of credentials uh, or financial transactions. If you have any questions or concerns about your company's cybersecurity or want some more information, 
please reach out to us at Raider. Our phone number is 337-205-4652. And then you see below, you can go to our website for more information. Um, or if you'd like to contact us, www.radiosolutions.com. I hope this was informative. I'm looking forward to doing another one soon. Uh, talk to you later. Thanks. Bye-bye.